Hello, my name is Elliot Palmer from Your Health Norfolk, and today I'm going to run through a FAME exercise class. FAME stands for Falls Management and Exercise, which works on different components of physical fitness to help regain, improve strength, balance, mobility, and the ability to get up and down from the floor. Just a few safety points before we get going. Please ensure that you're wearing loose, comfortable clothing, you have well-fitting shoes or trainers, you have a suitable chair for support, and you have a bottle of water nearby. Okay, we're going to start off with our warm-up and mobility exercises. So first thing we need to get on our feet and round to the back of our chairs. So first thing we need to hip walk to the front third of our chair. Nice tall posture, head facing forward, feet hip width apart, slide them slightly behind the knees, a little lean forward, count yourselves down, three, two, one, and we're pushing up onto our feet. Please take a second just to find your balance. Do a paddle with the feet if you need to, and then when you're ready, make your way around to the side of the chair and rest your hands on the chair. So we're going to start off with one minute of, one minute of marching. We're going to start with our feet hip width apart, nice tall posture, head facing forward. When you're ready, off we go with our marching. So we're just getting nice and loose here, pushing pushing the big toes off the floor and also keep breathing as well. Please rest your hands on the support if you need to and keeping that posture nice and tall, shoulders back and chest out, head facing forward. Make sure you keep your chin up at all times, don't look down to the floor, pick a spot in the wall in front of you and just focus on that. So we need to warm up to prepare ourselves for the session ahead. So getting the joints nice and loose, getting the fluid in the joints to prepare us for the session. And we're going to pause in three, two, one, and just pause there. We're going to go into our first mobility exercise, and that's going to be our shoulder lifts. Okay, so we're going to stand nice and tall, head facing forward, arms down by the sides, and we're going to lift our shoulders up towards our ears for four repetitions. And control down. Lifting those shoulders up nice and high, and control down. This is good for getting dressed in the mornings, getting the arms in your sleeves, reaching for stuff out of the cupboards, and relax there. We're going to go into our second mobility exercise, and that's going to be our side bends. So again, we're going to stand nice and tall, feet hip width apart, hands down by the sides, and head facing forward. We're going to reach down to one side, and we're going to do two repetitions on each side. So when you're ready, we're going to reach down to one side, head facing forward, using your leg as a guide, and back up. This is good for reaching for stuff off the floor, reaching for that remote to change the TV channel, and when you're ready, pausing at the top and onto the other side. Good, nice controlled action. Just remember to keep that head facing forward, not looking down, and using your leg as a guide. We're gonna go into our third mobility exercise, and that's going to be our trunk twist. So again, we're gonna stand nice and tall, 
head facing forward, using the support if you need to. And we're just going to turn at the trunk, keeping our legs and feet facing forward to one side, and we're going to do twice on each side. So we're going to turn to one side, nice and slow, nice and controlled, and back to the middle. This is good for turning around, walking past people in the street, and back to the middle. When you're ready, onto the other side, slight pause, and off we go. And back in. Also good for the lower back, if you've got any lower back issues. And back to the start. And just pause there. And we're gonna go into our final mobility exercise, and that's gonna be our ankle activators. Okay, so again, we're gonna stand nice and tall, feet hip width apart, head facing forward, using the support if you need to. And we're going to place our heel on the floor with our toe facing the ceiling. We're going to lift our toe and just place it where our heel was, okay, in this kind of motion. This is good for our general walking, stepping on and off curbs, on and off steps. And relax there. When you're ready, find your balance and switch sides. So the same again, heel on the floor, picking it up and just placing it where the heel was. Really emphasise pointing that toe towards the floor. This is good for the ankles. And pause there. Bring your feet back to hip width apart and find your balance. Nice tall posture. We're going to go into our dynamic endurance section now. So dynamic endurance is designed to help improve stamina, balance, aerobic fitness and muscular endurance to help with those day-to-day -day tasks like walking and gardening. So we're going to go into our marching to start off with. We're going to march continuously without stopping, developing a comfortable rhythm. And I'm going to demonstrate each exercise as we go along. Please keep marching until I say pause and then we'll go into that exercise. So we're going to start off with a nice gentle march, nice tall posture, feet hip width apart and when you're ready pushing off those big toes and lifting those knees up. If you need to remember to hold on to the support, keeping that posture nice and tall, head facing forward. So please keep marching. I'm going to demonstrate the first exercise. The first exercise is going to be our side taps. So we're going to stand nice and tall, feet hip width apart, and we're going to tap our toes out to the side. Okay, so we're going to aim for 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Okay, hold on to the support if you need to, keeping that posture nice and tall. So we're going to go into our side taps in 3, 2, one and just pause there, feet hip width apart, when you're ready, into those side taps, tapping to the side. Really emphasise pointing those toes down towards the floor, resting your hand on the support as we go along, if you need to, keeping that posture nice and tall, head facing forward. We're going to go back to our marching in three, two, one, and just pause there, bring your feet back to hip with the port part, nice tall posture, head facing forward, when you're ready, back to our marching. Now if we can, lifting our feet up a little bit higher than we did before, so we're creating bigger movements, and just remembering that posture as well. Keep marching while I demonstrate the next exercise, so the next exercise is going to be our side steps. So we're going to stand nice and tall, feet hip width apart, head facing forward and we're going to step to the side and bringing it back again. Always bring your feet back to hip width apart. So we're going to go into our side steps in three, two, one and just pause there. Feet hip width apart, nice tall posture. When you're ready, step into the side. 
Resting your hand on the support if you need to. If you're feeling confident, then you can let go. Always bring your feet back to hip width apart. That's your most stable position. And this is good for stepping by people in the streets and doing other day-to-day -day tasks. We're gonna go back to our marching in three, two, one, and just pause there. Feet back to hip width apart, nice tall posture. And we're gonna go back to our marching. So lifting those feet up again, and now if we can, lifting those feet up a little bit higher than you did before. So we are creating bigger movements. We're really trying to push off those big toes. And as we're pushing off those big toes, pointing your toes down towards the floor, lifting those knees as high as you can. Please keep marching, I'll demonstrate the next exercise. And the next exercise is gonna be our double side steps. So again, we're gonna stand nice and tall, feet hip width apart, head facing forward, and we're gonna do double side step to the side and back again. Okay, so double side step to the side and back. Bringing your feet back to hip width apart each time. So we're gonna go into our double side steps in three, two, one, and just pause there. Feet hip width apart, nice tall posture. When you're ready, double side step to the side and back. Using the support if you need to. Okay, so we're keeping that motion going, lifting those feet up off the floor, Try not to drag your feet. And we're gonna go back to our marching. In three, two, one, and just pause there. Bring your feet back to hip width apart, nice tall posture. When you're ready, back into our march. Now, if we can, lifting those feet up even higher. Okay, trying to get those knees up. Using the support if you need to. Okay, keep that posture nice and tall. So really trying to get those feet up as high as you can now. We should start to be feeling a little bit out of breath. But as long as you can still speak, you're working at the correct intensity. Okay. As you keep marching, I will demonstrate the next exercise. And the next exercise is going to be our double side steps, but using our arms. So we're going to stand nice and tall, feet hip width apart, and we're going to do a double side step with a bicep curl. So double side steps and we're bringing it back. If you need to hold on to the support, you can do this with one hand. That's not a problem. Okay, so we're gonna go into our double side steps with our arms in three, two, one, and just pause there. Feet back to hip width apart. Nice tall posture when you're ready into our double side steps with our arms. Just ensure you're lifting your feet up off the floor when you're doing this. Imagine you're stepping over something, walking sideways, and keeping your elbows tucked in as you lift your arms up. We're gonna go back to our marching in three, two, one, and just pause there. Bring your feet back to hip width apart. Nice tall posture when you're ready. Again, back to our marching. Please ensure you're keeping your knees nice and soft throughout, okay, so we're not locking out our joints. And again, with our posture, keeping our chest out and our head facing forward. If we can, again, lifting those feet up a little bit higher than you did before. Really try and push off your big toes and pointing your toes towards the floor as we go along. So we're gonna go into our final exercise and that's going to be our large marching. Okay, so we're gonna do 30 seconds of really big marching. So really trying to lift those knees up as high as you can. And we're gonna use our arms as well, again, if you can. If you need to hold on to the support, that is fine. So we're gonna go into our large marching in three, two, one, and off we go. So really try to push off your big toes. Really try to lift those knees up. Just keeping that posture nice and tall. If you can do it without the support, that's great. If you need to hold on, that's fine as well. Good, so keep that motion going. Last 10 seconds now, keep it going. 
Keeping that posture straight, head facing forward, using those arms, getting those knees up as high as you can. Three, two, one, and we're just going to slowly bring it down now to a nice gentle march. Okay, so we're just making our movements a little bit smaller. Just remember to keep breathing throughout, in through the nose, out through the mouth, and using the support again if you need to. We're going to go into our final exercise, and that's going to be our, we're going to go back to our side taps. Okay, so we're going to stand nice and tall, please keep marching as I demonstrate, nice and tall, feet hip width apart, and we're going to go into our side taps to the side. Okay, so we're going to go into our side taps in three, two, one, and just pause there. Feet hip width apart, nice tall posture. When you're ready, back to our side taps. Okay, so again, emphasizing pointing those toes towards the floor. We're using our ankles. Again, important, important for our walking, stepping on and off curbs, on and off steps, in and out of the house. Good, keep that motion going. Well done, everyone. And we're going to go back to our marching in three, two, one, and just pause there. Remember to bring your feet back to hip width apart, nice tall posture, head facing forward, and back to a nice gentle march for our last part of the dynamic endurance. Just remember throughout this, keep breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. Good, and pushing off those big toes. We're almost there. And we're going to stop marching in three, two, one, and just pause there. Just take a second, bring your feet back to hip width apart, and just rest your hand on the support. We're going to go into our strength exercises with resistance band now. So strength exercises are designed to help improve muscular strength, to help with those day-to-day -day tasks like carrying shopping. So we want to grab our resistance bands. Firstly, we need to get on the front third of our chair. Nice tall posture. And we're going to start with our upper thigh strengthener. So we're going to slide one leg forward, place the band, under that foot, please take care when you're doing this. Grip the band about knee height. Again, nice tall posture, head facing forward, and we're going to pull the band back towards the hips and just rest the hands there. And then we're just going to extend the leg out. Don't lock out the knee, leave a slight bend in your knee, and we're holding for three seconds. And then we're controlling the leg back and relaxing the arms. We're aiming for eight repetitions. So we're sliding the arms back, pushing the leg forward, slight bend in the knee, and we're controlling that leg back and relaxing the arms. Again, keeping a nice tall posture throughout. This is going to help you get on and off chairs at home, in and out of bed, and on and off the toilet, and relax the leg back. And again, we're pushing out. Band back towards the hips. And we're controlling back. Last three now. So we're band back to over the hips, pushing out with the leg, keeping that posture tall, and controlling the leg back. And again, we're pushing out, band back towards the hips. and relax the leg back. Last repetition now. So again, band back towards the hips. We're pushing out with the leg. Again, posture, head facing forward, holding that position, 
for three seconds and relax. Okay, we need to switch legs now. So we're going to place the band under the other leg. So again, we need to slide that leg slightly forward, heel on the floor, and just placing that band carefully under that foot. Again, posture check, so nice tall posture, head facing forward. Again, creating that resistance by pulling the band back towards the hips, and then we're just extending and pushing that leg out. Slight bend in the knee, and relax. Good, and again, band back, and push up. We should start to be feeling this in the upper leg, just above the knee. Okay, so take the exercise nice and slow, nice and controlled. Good, and relax. And again, pushing out. Keeping that posture tall, head facing forward. And relax the leg. Last two now. Band back towards the hips, pushing out. And relax. And last one, so band back towards the hips, pushing out with the leg. Holding that position for three seconds. Controlling that leg back. And relax there. Good. Now we're going to go into our outer thigh, our outer, sorry, our hip strengthener. So hip strengthener designed to improve strength around the hips to help with activities like getting dressed, getting in and out of the car, and other day-to-day -day tasks as well. So firstly, we need to grab the band and we need to place our knees together, placing the band just above the knees. We're going to wrap the band around, cross it over underneath, and bring it out of the top. So make sure it's fairly tight around the legs. And we're just gonna walk the feet out slightly. Again, we're gonna aim for eight repetitions for this exercise. So again, we need to correct our posture, nice and tall, head facing forward, and then we're going to push the legs out. So then our knees are in line with our ankle. And again, just holding that position there, for three seconds and control the knees back together again. And again, we're pushing out. Good, holding that position and control back in. Keeping that posture nice and tall, head facing forward, pushing out with those legs, hold and controlling those knees back together. And again, we're pushing out, hold, and control. And again, last two now, so we're pushing out, hold, and control back in. Last rep now, so again, posture, pushing out, holding that position, and control the knees back together again. And that's the hip strength. Going into our chest strength for now. Okay, so this is going to be strengthening around the chest, around the shoulders, to help with those day-to-day -day tasks, like getting dressed. So we're going to grab the band, and we're going to wrap it around our body. Have assistance doing this if you do struggle to get the band around. Make sure the band is coming out underneath our arms and we're gripping the band three quarters of the way up. To create more resistance, you can grip the band further down towards your body if you want. So we're gonna start off with a nice tall posture, head facing forward, and we're gonna extend those arms out. Don't lock out the elbows, leave a slight bend, and then we're just gonna cross over once, taking extra care if you've got any issues with shoulders, any arthritis, and we're controlling the hands back. And again, we're pushing out, cross, and then we're crossing, and then slowly bring the arms back again. Again, this is gonna help you with pushing those doors open, 
pushing yourself in and out of bed in the mornings and the evenings and then slowly bring the arms back. Good, we're pushing out, cross, cross and then slowly bring the arms back. Good, last two reps now. So keep it going, we're pushing out, cross, cross, and slowly bring it back. Good, last repetition. Again, we're pushing out with those arms, cross, cross, and then slowly control back. And that's the chest strengthener. We're gonna go into our final band exercise now, and that's gonna be the upper back strengthener. So I'm just going to position myself so you can see what I'm doing. So again, front third of the chair, nice tall posture, and we're going to place the band on our palms facing upwards, okay? About hands width away from each other. Nice tall posture in your chair, elbows tucked in, the band should be around stomach height, and we need to create that resistance. So we need to pull the band apart, slide the elbows back, and as we come back, squeezing those shoulder blades together. Holding that position again for three seconds, and then control the arms back out, keeping that resistance on at all times until you bring the arms out, and then relax. And then again, we're aiming for eight repetitions again. This exercise is very good, again, for getting yourself dressed in the mornings, putting on seat belts, putting arms in sleeves in our coats and jackets, and relax. And again, pull apart, elbows back. Really try and squeeze those shoulder blades together, and then control back out, keeping that resistance on until you're all the way out, and relax. And again. Elbows tucked in at all times, keeping that posture nice and tall. And control back. Last two repetitions now, so pull the band apart, elbows back. Hold that position there. And then control the band and the arms back out again. Last repetition. Sliding those elbows back, keeping them tucked in. We're holding that position, squeezing those shoulder blades together. And then control it back out. And relax there. And that's the strength section done. We're going to go into our dynamic balance section now. So dynamic balance is designed to help improve balance and to make you feel more confident and steady on your feet. The first exercise we're going to go into is our squat and reach. So you need a stable chair in front of you. We're going to aim for eight repetitions. First thing, we're going to place our hands just resting on the chair, feet just slightly outside hip width, and then we're just going to bend at the knees and we're going to push our hips and bum back. Just go as low as you feel comfortable working within your range of motion and just holding that position there for a couple of seconds and we're pushing back up. As we push back up we're going on to our tiptoes and we're reaching as high as we can towards the ceiling for up to five seconds and then we're controlling that back down. Reset yourself and off we go again. So pushing the hips and bum back, holding onto the chair if you need to and then we're pushing up on towards the tiptoes and we're reaching up as high as we can. This is good for reaching for stuff out the cupboards, getting on and off chairs. And again, we're pushing, lowering ourselves down and we're pushing through our heels back up on towards tiptoes and we're reaching forward towards the ceiling and control yourself back down. Nice and slow on the way down. Again, as low as you feel comfortable. 
holding that position for a couple of seconds and then we're going back up on towards the tiptoes and we're reaching up nice and high. Three more repetitions, so again, lowering down, bending at those knees, nice and controlled, keeping that back straight and we're pushing up again on towards those tiptoes and we're reaching up as high as you can, keeping on those big toes and back down. And again, nice and slow on that way down, holding that position and we're pushing back up onto the big toes, reaching up as high as we can, getting those arms up and relax back down. And that's the squat and reach. Bring your feet back to hip width apart and then we're going to go into our next exercise. So we're going to do two walking balance exercises. We're going to do heel to toe walking forwards and backwards. Okay, so we need to stand side onto the support. So a kitchen new yoke, or if you've got a row of chairs at home. Again, nice tall posture. Now we want to be feeling slightly unsteady, slightly wobbly when we're doing this. Again, just make sure you've got that support there if you need it. So nice tall posture. And we're going to place one foot directly in front of the other. And we're going to walk nice and slowly in a straight line towards the end of the chair. Keeping our head position nice and straight. Taking your time with this. Keeping your posture nice and tall. Okay, once you get to the end of the support, just stop there. And then we're going to walk backwards. So heel to toe, backwards. So placing one foot directly behind the other foot. So we do need to challenge our balance as we're doing this. So if we can, if you're feeling confident enough, loosen your grip on that support, maybe just resting a couple of fingertips on top. But if we need to hold on, that's fine. Good, once you reach the end of the support, again, we're gonna go forwards. So again, heel to toe walking forwards. Again, keeping that posture nice and tall, shoulders back. Again, it's a good thing if you are feeling slightly unsteady, a little bit wobbly, just make sure you've got your hand on the support if you need to. Good, and again, we're gonna go backwards, so just slight pause there, and when you're ready, we're walking backwards. Challenge that balance if we can. So try and loosen that grip on the support, maybe just resting with one finger if you're feeling confident enough. And once you reach the end, just pause there, make sure you bring your feet back to hip width apart and hold on to the support if you need to. We're going to go into our final balance exercise and that's going to be our one leg stand. So again, we're going to be standing side onto the support, feet hip width apart. We're going to be bringing our outside leg up. So we need to transfer the weight onto the inside leg. Again, nice tall posture. And we're lifting that leg up as high as we can off the floor and just holding that position. Again, we want to be challenging our balance throughout. So if we can, loosening your grip on that support, Maybe just taking away a couple of fingers. We're holding up for 20 seconds and then we're going to switch legs. So keep holding it there, keep that posture tall, head facing forward, challenge that balance. And then we're going to just slowly bring that leg down. Make sure your feet are hip width apart. And then we're going to turn around and do the other leg. Okay, so turn towards your support and then to the other side. Take time doing this. Again, outside leg, so the other leg this time. So we just need to transfer that weight onto the inside leg. Start off by holding onto your support. And we're just bringing that outside leg up. 
and just holding that position. Again, keeping that posture straight, shoulders back, chest out, head facing forward. Challenge your balance again. Loosen that grip if we can. So maybe go to two fingers or one finger or just your fingertips. Okay, we should be feeling a slight wobble in our ankles. Okay, it means our body's trying to stabilize itself and we're using our balance systems. Gonna bring our leg down in three, two, one, and relax there. Bring your feet back to hip width apart and hold onto your support. We're going to go into our backwards training section of the fame class. Backwards training is a method that we use to get down to the floor and then back up again. We're also going to do two exercises once we're down on all fours. So I'm going to demonstrate getting down to the floor. So firstly, we need to sit nice and tall in our chair and we're going to hip walk to the front third of our chair. Keeping a nice tall posture, head facing forward and we're going to count ourselves down, three, two, one, and then we're going to stand up. We need to take one or two steps away from the chair. And then making sure our feet are hip width apart. And then we're slowly going to turn and face the chair. We're going to take a lunge with our strongest leg, placing our both hands on the chair. We're going to shift the weight onto both hands and then we're going to drop our back knee down, making the chair is nice and stable and then we're going to un unhook the other leg and place the other knee down. Just take a moment and then we're going to place one hand down and then two hands down, making sure our tummy muscles are tucked in and then we're just going to crawl backwards so we've got enough room away from the chair when we're doing these exercises. So now we're on all fours and I'm going to demonstrate two exercises on the floor and then I'm going to demonstrate getting yourself back up again. So the first exercise we're going to do is a box balance. So firstly we need to make sure that our back is nice and straight, neutral and we're tucking our tummy muscles in. We're going to transfer the weight onto one side and then we're going to place, bring our arm out in front and then with the opposite leg, extend it out behind. And then we're just trying to hold this position for up to five seconds and then slowly control back. We're going to do this again on the same side and then we're going to switch sides. So again, we're going to extend that arm out and with the opposite leg, extend it out behind. And again, just holding that position for up to five seconds and control the arm and leg back. And now we're going to switch sides. So same again with the other side. Again, just correcting your posture so making sure your back is neutral and straight and you're tucking your tummy muscles in. Again, we're extending the arm out in front and then extending the other leg out behind. And again, we're just holding that position for up to five seconds. And then we'll control the arm and leg back. Give yourself a second and then we'll go again. Again, nice and slow, control the arm and leg back and relax. 
And now we're going to go into our final exercise, which is our press-ups. So we're going to have our hands, again shoulder width apart, back nice and straight, tucking in the tummy muscles, and then we're just bending at the elbows, keeping the elbows tucked in, and just lower yourself towards the floor as low as you can go, and then we're pushing back up again. Good, and we're aiming for eight repetitions of these. So again, lowering yourself towards the floor, hold for a couple of seconds, and pushing back up. And pushing back up. Again, take it nice and slow, nice and controlled. You should be feeling this around the chest, and also shoulders as well. Keeping that spine as straight as you can. Final two reps. Again, take it nice and controlled. And back up. And last one. and back up again. Again, just give yourself a second, and I'm now gonna demonstrate the same method, getting yourself back up from the floor and onto the chair. So what we're gonna do is, we're going to crawl towards the chair. So we're gonna place one hand on, and then two hands on. Okay, just make sure that the chair is nice and stable, it's not going to move, and just give yourself a second. We need to unhook the strongest leg. Okay, so unhooking the strongest leg. Again, just giving yourself a second. And then we need to do a big push to get on the leg. So big push. And ensuring that your feet are now hip width apart. And then just giving yourself a second and just placing your hands on our legs and just slowly control yourself back. Please make sure you find your balance before you move forward. And then you're slowly going to turn around. Find the chair on the back of the legs. And then slow as you can. So just lower yourself down towards the chair and relax. And that's the backwards training. We're going to go into our final section of our fan class, which is the cool down. So we're going to march for one minute, which helps to promote relaxation and return us to our pre-exercise state. So we're going to bring our feet hip width apart, nice tall posture, chest out, holding onto the support if we need to, and we're just going to gently march on the spot. Okay, so pushing those feet up off the floor, nice and steady, lifting those knees up, keeping our head facing forward and our posture nice and tall. So just keeping this motion going. Again, resting your hands on the support if we need to. So nice and steady. Remember to keep breathing throughout and remember to push off those big toes, pointing those toes towards the floor as we lift them off the ground. Keep that chin up and keep that posture nice and tall. we can introduce a little bit of an arm swing as well. You can do this with one arm as well, with one hand resting on the support. 
Reducing, introducing a little bit of an arm swing, again pushing off those big toes, keeping that posture nice and tall. So nice and steady with this section, try not to rush through it. Okay, this is part of our cool down. So we're returning to our pre-exercise state. And we're going to just slow down and just stop bringing our feet back to hip width apart. Again, nice tall posture. When you're ready, make your way over to the chair and take a seat. So finding the chair on the back of your legs and then slowly lower yourself down towards the chair. So we're going to go into our stretches now. So we're going to work from our legs up to our upper body. So we need to firstly hip walk to the front third of our chair. Again, nice tall posture, head facing forward, and we're going to go into a hamstring stretch. So we're stretching the back of the upper leg. So we need to slide one leg forward, heel on the floor, toe facing towards the ceiling, two hands on the bent leg. Again, nice tall posture, and we're just leaning forward slightly until you feel that stretch at the back of the upper leg. And we're just holding that position for 10 seconds. Keep your head position nice and upright, head facing forward, and that back nice and straight. And we're slowly with our upper body back, sliding that leg back, and we're switching sides now, so we're sliding the other leg forward. Again, two hands on the bent leg. Nice tall posture, head facing forward, and we're going to just lean forward slightly. Keep that back nice and straight, just until you feel a little bit of a stretch at the back of the upper leg. And we're just holding that position for 10 seconds again. Just keep that posture nice and tall, head facing forward. And then we're slowly bringing our upper body back and we're sliding that leg back. We're gonna go into our next stretch now and that's going to be our chest stretch. So we're gonna place one hand towards the back of the chair and the other hand. And again, nice tall posture, sticking the chest out and then we're just gonna pull the shoulder blades together and stick the chest out. You should be feeling this around the chest and shoulders. And we're holding for up to 10 seconds. Again, keep that head position facing forward. Keep holding that position. And then we're relaxing that. We're going to go into our next stretch now, which is going to stretch our sides and also our shoulders. So we're going to place one hand on your shoulder and the other hand just underneath for a bit of support. And then we're just going to slowly, with our other hand, just lift our shoulder up, lift our arm up, reaching up towards the ceiling, as high as you can go, and then over to the opposite side. If you're feeling confident, take that hand away. You can leave it there for support if you need to. And then again, we're holding that for up to 10 seconds. And then we're slowly controlling it back. Use the other arm just to control the arm back down and relax it there. And then we're switching sides. So same again, nice tall posture, hand on the shoulder, and then we're just using the other hand just to support and slowly lift it up. Reaching up towards the ceiling, and then over to the opposite side. And then you can take that hand away, and we're just reaching up as high as you can. And you should be feeling that down the sides 
of your back and also the shoulders as well. If you're unable to reach up this high, then just go with, work within your range of motion. And then we're slowly bringing the arm back down, placing the other, arm, other hand underneath that arm, just controlling it back down and relax. We're going to go into our final section of our FAME exercise class, and that's Tai Chi, which is the final part of our cool down. Tai Chi is aimed to improve balance, improve movement, and to promote relaxation. The exercise we're going to do is waving the hands like clouds, and we're going to do this movement for two minutes. Firstly, we need to put our feet slightly outside hip width, bending at the knees, so nice soft knees, chest out, nice tall posture, engaging those tummy muscles. Firstly, we need to bring our hand up with our palm face towards you, up to our head level, circling it away and taking it away from our body, and then controlling the hand back down. As you bring that hand back down, we are bringing the other one up, Again, palm facing towards you, up to your eye level, and then just circular motion, just turning the hand away and bringing the arm back down again. Again, into the other arm, nice and controlled. Try and relax the muscles as you do this. Again, bringing that arm back down and bringing the other one up. Just remember to keep breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth, and just try and relax the body and create flowing movements. Again, as you bring that arm back down, bringing the other one up and taking it away. Keep engaging those tummy muscles, keeping the chest out and a nice neutral spine. And deep breaths as we go along. We're going to introduce shifting of the weight. So as we bring that palm facing up, we're going to turn the hand away, the circular motion, and just shift our weight to that side. And as we bring our arm down, shifting our weight back, and again with the other hand bringing it up and just taking it away, shifting our weight to the other side. Again, just try and relax as we're doing this. Keep that breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. And keep a nice neutral spine. And relax there. Bringing your feet back to hip width apart and holding on to the support. 